Kelly. Join me as I show you how to make Cheryl's tiny snowflake earrings. Whether or not you make them and have the little bells with the flower caps at the bottom or extend them into a bigger snowflake, one on top of the other, there's lots of variations and lots of ideas, hopefully, that will spring from making this design. Remember, if you need any supplies, go ahead and look below the video in the description. There'll be links there to gather all your supplies that you need. Gather everything up and let's get started. So to get started on these tiny snowflake earrings, we're gonna be starting with our top bead here and our top tiny little flower. I'm holding the end of some size six dragon thread in my gray color and I'm putting on six of my darker blue bead. You can go in and you can create with white as well too if you want that white pearl Ceylon color, looks more snowflakey, I'm going a little bit more icy. You can also have this look like a tropical flower by just using brighter colors. Once you have those six beads, go ahead and tie that into a loop. You can also, if you want to use a stop bead, up to you. I'm gonna tie mine into a loop so they are nice and tight together. We want that middle close together because we are going to be creating peaks off of it. So to continue to create, we are going to sew through our next bead, which will be the first one that we put on our thread and needle separate out those two beads between bead number one and number two, we're gonna add what is a seventh bead. Then we're gonna come out between beads two and three and add an eighth bead. This is going to continue the whole way around, adding in one additional bead between each one of the original six for a total of 12 beads. So we have row number one, which is six beads, and then we have our second row, number two, our lighter blue, which are another six beads. Circling around, the reason we're putting these beads in secondary is because we want them to sit nice and tight as peaks versus in between the original blue beads. If we would have put the lighter blue beads between the blue beads in the original circle, it would not be nearly as tight. You'd have a bigger opening. And in that case, you could actually do some of the, um, some more petals or some more little points in your snowflakes. After you add your six beads there in between each one of your original six, so you have a new set of six, I want you to step up through bead number one that you added in that lighter blue color or white if you've done that. From here we're going to add two beads between each one of our um, lighter blue beads. We're going to pick up two of our darker blue beads and sew through the next lighter blue bead. So this time we're going through beads seven through 12, and we're adding two more between each of those. Go two more and on to the next. As you go the whole way around, adding two more between the next, you'll notice that these two beads almost sit like they're in a V. They sit with one to one side, one to the other, and sit almost like a herringbone style. As you come back and go through that first bead that your thread was coming out of again, you're also going to step up now through bead number one of those two beads that you just added. That'll separate out those two beads and give us space to add a third bead or a little bead at the top sewing then into that second bead on the group of two. Down a row through the lighter blue bead. And then once again, thread a needle come out through the first of those two beads that you just added on the last row. This is gonna create all of our points or our peaks on our little snowflakes. Going in through that lighter blue bead and then out through my one bead of the set of two down through that second bead oh, and not getting a whole nother earring attached. Taking that then down through your lighter blue bead that sits before that group of two and up. You can see how quick and simple this project is, just spinning it around in your hand and making these tiny little snowflakes. Going down into the previous row, up through bead number one, add a new bead and go through bead number two. 
As I come around and add the last of my snowflake point here, this is my opportunity to add my wire guard or my wire protector to the piece. So my all my little points are done now in that snowflake. You can see all of them hanging out there. And what I want to do is sew over to the first little point or peak that I added. When we go in, if you want to make a bigger snowflake to hang on the bottom, this is where we're going to pick up and create the bigger snowflake. So all these steps are the same. First row of six, second row of six, third row of two by six, so 12, and then our fourth row of just that single bead. We're gonna add the wire guard, and then we're going to pick up that same spot here, and I'm gonna show you how to do one more or two more rows to make it a little bit bigger. Right now, coming out of that top first peak, grab your wire guard or wire protector, go up through it, down through the opposite side then. If you've never used a wire guard or wire protector, they are awesome. They give a nice polished finished look. The wire goes up through a tube around a curved section there, down through the tube on the other side, and through the bead as well. Anytime you use a wire guard, wire protector, or get ready to add your clasp or closure or ear wire, you always wanna make sure that you have two threads going through that to support it and just to act as a little buffer since the connection points or the clasp and closer sections are where you get the most wear and tear. From here, we're gonna get rid of this thread and we're gonna start a new thread for our second little snowflake if you want to continue on with that. If you want to continue on with the design without a bigger snowflake, you can do like Cheryl did in her sample piece here, going in and doing a row of six seed beads, then a little flower cup, a bead to hold it coming back up through that bottom bead the opposite direction, group of five through the bead again, group of four and back through and then tie off the thread ends. I'm gonna tie off this thread end here, taking it back towards the back of the project, getting to where those thread ends are matching, sewing over a little bit. And then we're going to go in and create a second snowflake that we're gonna make just a tiny little bit bigger. And I'll show you how we're gonna use some simple right angle weave to hang it from the bottom. So for my bottom star, I or snowflake, I switched up the color a little bit just so you could see the difference of how it looks when you have different colors. Color can make all the difference. This one has much more of that star look, or if you want to, you can even do the points that same color and get even more of that star look. So if you are done with your snowflake and you wanna make one that's a tiny bit bigger, like this bottom one, what you're gonna do is that same almost netting technique. We're gonna add four of our lighter blue beads between each one of those six points. So four more beads go on through the next bead there. Four more beads go on through the next bead. So you're doing this on between each one of those six points, adding in four more beads. Once you get back to the start, and of course I need three more beads, we're gonna separate out those groups of four. And what we're gonna do is separate them out just like we did the group of two blue ones here. We are going to separate out into groups of two. So you just put on four beads here between each one of your lighter beads. Go through beads one and two add a fifth bead basically to that little area, creating a peak, and then go be through beads three and four, down into the bead that sits in the row before, and then once again, out through beads one and two, adding your peak along the side. So as you go around, you're going up two, putting a bead on, and then it almost feels like you're sewing down three. You're sewing down through beads number three and four and below the bead below from the row previous. Go up through beads one and two, add another bead and down. 
And as I go around here and get ready to add my last two points, we're gonna show how we connect then the two snowflakes together. You can do this in a multitude of ways, but I'm going to be adding them in the most simple way. You can also, we were doing this via Twitch and via Facebook Live, and this is actually a design by Cheryl, so thank you Cheryl for this one here. You can add a Monty in the middle of the snowflake if you want to for a different look. You can add uh, a bead in the middle, you can keep it open, again make it look more floral than snowflake, lots and lots of things. What you can do now is connect them. So I'm coming out the top of that last peak that I made. I'm going to grab the top snowflake that I have my wire guard on, grab one more 11 0 sew into that bottom bead that sits directly across from the wire guard, add one more 11 0 and sew back into the opposite side of that same darker blue bead that my thread was coming out of. That creates a little right angle weave unit there of the four beads together. Reinforce it one more time going through the two side beads as well as the connector beads on both the top and bottom snowflake. Give a nice tight pull and then sew your needle and thread down toward the bottom of the project and just simply burn off the ends of the thread. So whether or not you do the tiny snowflakes as just the tiny little ones, if you embrace that white color and go with the Ceylon, you can use the little drop down from the center there of that point where we did the connection, adding in the little bells, to the little flower cups to look like bells, and really changing it up, even making a cute little charm bracelet as well. Hopefully this gives you some ideas of some different things that you can do simply with some 11 OC beads. Thanks so much for joining in and creating these tiny snowflake earrings. Thanks to Cheryl for the design and also thank you to those that watched it live on Facebook with Cheryl and I, as well as those on Twitch. As always, if you want to go ahead and leave a comment, we'll answer any questions or um, little comments that you may have or ideas. Great to add those to the comment section because it helps out other Potomac beaters as well. As always, if you haven't yet, hit that little subscribe button so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you again to Cheryl and stay tuned for more inspirational designs.